Probability of Independent Events, 13.3a. Make sure to check the video description for helpful links to other lessons and a link to the high school geometry playlist. Events are independent events if the occurrence of one of the events does not affect the probability of the other. They're independent of each other. Picking a card and replacing it into the deck then picking another card is independent because we replaced the card so there was a full deck again. But picking a card and not replacing it to the deck, then picking another, is not independent because the deck has one less. We would have to replace the card in order for the events to be independent of each other. So for your notes, probability of independent events, if A, an event, and B, another event, are independent events, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. So we've got two independent events, A and B, and the probability of them both occurring, we would just multiply their probability. So some examples of independent events would be rolling a pair of dice. So we have two number cubes. The, out, the outcome of one number cube is not affected by the outcome of the other cube. Another example, tossing a coin and rolling a number cube. We have two separate events that are independent of each other. The outcome of the coin toss does not affect the outcome for the number cube for the die. So we can find the probability of independent events by using multiplication. So here we have a spinner, and we need to find what is the probability of spinning a 5, then spinning again and getting a 5 again. Well, spinning a 5 once does not affect the probability of spinning a 5 again, so the events are independent of each other. We have the probability of 5 and then 5 it's going to equal the probability of spinning a 5 multiplied by the probability of spinning a 5. So we have three fives here on this spinner, and we have eight sections. Three out of the eight sections are a 5, so we have three eighths is our probability of spinning one 5. To do a 5 and then a 5 again, we would do three eighths times three eighths, which gives us nine sixty-fourths. If we wanted the probability of spinning a 1 and then a 5, well, there's 8 sections and 4 of them are a 1, so we have half for spinning the 1, the 3 eighths for spinning the 5, so to have the probability of a 1 and then spinning a 5 would be 3 sixteenths. There's only one 3 here out of the 8 sections, so that's 1 eighth. The probability of spinning a 3 and then a 5 would be 1 8 times 3 8, which would be 3 64. Here we have a spinner that's got some colors to it, green, purple, and blue. What's the probability of spinning purple, then spinning again, getting green, and then spinning again and getting purple? Well, there's 8 sections. Two of them are purple, so that's 2 8 and green has three sections out of the eight, so that's three eighths. The probability of spinning a purple and then spinning and getting a green and then spinning and getting a purple would be two eighths times three eighths times two eighths. And that two eighths can be a one fourth, can't it? So we have one fourth times three eighths times one fourth. That gives us three one hundred twenty eighths for the probability of spinning a purple and then a green and then a purple. If we toss a coin three times, what's the probability it'll land tails up on all three tosses? The outcome of each toss is independent of the outcome of the next toss. There's two sides to a coin, which means one out of two chances it'll be tails. So for the first toss, we have one half. 
second toss, we have one half, and the third toss, we have one half. One half times one half times one half is one eighth. So that would be the probability of getting three tails up. So each set of three tosses is one trial. And out of eight trials, the coins will probably all land tails up once. And because this is probability, it's not guaranteed, is it? This isn't a definite amount of times that it'll happen. This is the probability that it'll happen. It will probably happen. Here we have a bag of gems. We can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six gems in the bag, but only one is pink. So what's the probability of picking the pink gem from the bag, putting it back in the bag, and then picking the pink gem again? So it's going to be the probability of pink, then pink again. And these are independent because we're putting it back in the bag. So we have the probability of pink times the probability of pink. There's one pink one out of six gems, so that's one six. So we're going to do one six times one six, which is one thirty-six. Each set of picking a gem, putting it back, then picking another gem is one trial. Out of 36 trials, we'll probably get pink, then pink again one time. It's not definite. This is the probability that it'll happen. We're going to continue on with 13.3b and talk about the probability of dependent events and conditional probability. We're going to continue on with use a table to find conditional probability, and we're going to end 13.3 with determine whether events are independent or dependent. If you'd like more information, I'm going to have a link to chapter 15 from Algebra 2 that talks about counting and probability. In the Algebra 2 videos, we'll talk about the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle and subsets and stuff like that. So if you think it'll help you, check the description. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.